Joining me on this episode of CEO Talks on INN is Chris Dorbos of E3 Metals. Chris, I want to welcome you to the show. It's good to see you again. I last saw you in, in Toronto at PDAC earlier this year before the world turned upside down. Now, before we get into sort of the exciting developments that have been coming along over the last five or six months for you, uh, just for viewers' sake, uh, what's your uh, symbol? What market are you trading on? Uh, E3 is listed on the Toronto Venture Exchange under ETMC. And it's a pretty exciting company, Canadian-based company that is, you know, extracting lithium from the byproduct of uh, decades of oil extraction in Leduc. Uh, and you're producing this lithium for a market that looks like it's really starting to grow. What is the, the, the landscape looking like now with this rise in EVs and ba battery manufacturers around the world saying, uh, we are going to need this ba battery grade lithium? This puts you in, a, in an interesting spot as this, as this market's about to explode. Yeah, I mean, we've definitely seen over the past, uh, you know, even six to 12 months, um, the electric vehicle solidify itself as something that is going to be up and coming and be a major player in the automobile market. And we see that all over the world. We see globally uh, in Europe and the commitments there uh, to go all electric or uh, all non-internal combustion now by 2030. We also see it um, locally here in Canada uh, with the recent announcement by Ford to start producing uh, electric in Oakville uh, in Ontario. So lots of, lots of development uh, across the globe. And, the biggest thing that we've seen uh, along with that is that the lithium ion battery is certainly solidifying itself as the technology of choice going forward to power these electric vehicles. Well, and that battery market is is really expanding. I know that on, uh, was it World Battery Day, uh, Elon Musk said that they are now uh, starting to focus on the development of a million mile battery. So what kind yeah. of pressure does this start to put on the entire manufacturing uh, uh, battery process and their need for lithium? Well, yeah, exactly. I mean, the, the demand for lithium is projected to uh, increase exponentially over the coming years. And it's a really great position for E3 to be in as we're developing a new technology in the incumbent uh, DLE or direct lithium extraction space. And so for us, there's a big market growing for our product. And uh, the supply side of that, it, from the predictions that we've seen, uh, is not gonna be able to keep up. So it present, presents a really solid opportunity for E3 to bring battery quality lithium products into the market at just the right time. Well, I have heard that over the next 10 years or so, the demand is expected to grow by somewhere between 15 to 18 times what it currently is right now. Are you hearing that same kind of prediction? Yeah, we see a range, uh, but we definitely see uh, an increase uh, very, very heavily over the next uh, five to 10 years. So, you know, well over a million tons of demand into 2030. We're currently sitting at about you know, 300 to 350,000 tons of production available to the market today. So that's a big increase and a big requirement for uh, projects like ours to get into production. Well, you touched on a project like yours. Uh, for some of our viewers, they may, they may not be aware of this unique position that you're in and the interesting link between the extraction of petroleum in the past leaving what behind was once considered to be a waste product, but which may be an incredible resource moving forward in the extraction of lithium. <laughs> Give our viewers just a little bit of a background about uh, E3 metals and the resource that you have at your, uh, well, at your disposal. Uh, <laughs> exactly. Well, we call it uh, here at E3, the Alberta Advantage. And really what that is, is that this project uh, produces fluids, just like an oil and gas project. Um, of course, we're not producing oil or gas, we're producing just the brine. But an oil project today in the same reservoir produces uh, significant amounts of brine. So we understand exactly the size of this reservoir, how to produce fluids from this reservoir. Uh, and more importantly, that the reservoir can deliver the volume of fluids needed for any project like ours uh, to be commercially uh, economic. And so from that perspective, uh, the oil and gas industry is, is, as you might know, you know, it's suffering a little bit in Alberta. And given that, 
there's a huge opportunity because as this project produces just like oil, it there's the skill set, the technical technological people here in the province uh, to help grow this project into commercial uh, operation. And that advantage can't be understated looking at the peers in the space. It also allows us to do something in Alberta that is done on a regular basis, which is put a project like this into operation. So things like social license, government permitting, these things are, are examples of uh, low risk for the project. And that's really important as we grow this towards uh, a commercial operation. Well, you have been working with Alberta Innovate. Uh, t let's start uh, there. And then you also have other news to share about partnerships that you have. Um, tell us what's been happening there and, and why it's important that, that these partners come into your project and help you to develop it. Yeah, we've definitely seen uh, a great amount of support from the Alberta government. Uh, more recently, we received a, a grant from the uh, Innovate, Alberta Innovates, a technology funding agency, uh, for 100000 just under $100,000. Um, but more importantly, uh, in September, uh, we hosted the Minister of Energy at our office to announce uh, their movement into the critical mineral space by developing a task force to look at how to promote and develop uh, critical minerals in Alberta more efficiently. And we are very happy to host uh, Minister Savage for that. And even more excited that the government is looking at this very closely as an avenue to generate revenue for the province. And I think that only good things are to come from that. And as, of course, as anyone would know, it's incredibly important to have government support uh, for a project uh, such as this. So that ties into also the Alberta advantage um, as we develop this project. So you also have partners that have, uh, you know, specific expertise in working with this kind of resource uh, based also in Alberta. How important is it that they be uh, a part of this project with you? I mean, it's absolutely critical that we work with um, partners that have expertise and that's on both sides of the fence. You know, there is the production of brine from the reservoir. And, you know, that's an Alberta specific skill set. We know how to do that here in the province. We do it every day. Um, and the other side of this is de developing uh, the process to make a battery quality lithium product, which is very important part of the business model because we want to supply products directly into the battery market. And on that side of the fence, we have Livent Corporation, who's been helping us uh, develop our technology over the past uh, just over a year now. And we made great headway with them as we move towards uh, hopefully piloting this. And E3 is aiming to have that pilot running, or at least in construction, in 2021. So we're pushing very hard to get this technology proven out so we can move quickly towards uh, production after that. So working with them just for, once again, for the benefit of people who are unfamiliar with the company, you're using an eye on technology to draw the lithium out of the brine uh, to speed up that extraction process and then you're producing a lithium that you can convert into the the form or format that battery producers have decided that they want uh, do i have that right yeah that's exactly right um what we've developed is what we call a primary extraction method in in the industry we call it direct lithium extraction and it differs from traditional uh extraction methods in, in brines, which are evaporation ponds in South America uh, and other places. Our process uh, directly removes the lithium from the brine and we produce a high grade, high purity product that is a precursor to um, battery quality product. So once we have that, what we call our lithium concentrate, we can put it through more conventional lithium processing applications that are readily available to make battery quality products here in the province. So we plan to go all the way in this project to battery quality lithium products. Wow. So right now, when we take a look at where you are in the process, how would you define to somebody who says, okay, this sounds really interesting. How close are you actually to making this happen? And what are your next steps between here and there? Right. Um, you know, the biggest thing that we have to do to demonstrate that this is a, a viable processing method is prove it in a pilot plant. 
And a lot of the work that E3 has been doing over the past three years is focused on obtaining that goal. And we're very close. The work with Liven has definitely accelerated that and gotten, gotten us a lot closer to that end goal. And once we've proven it out uh, through that pilot, um, the development of a commercial facility is fairly straightforward. We obviously have to scale that technology, but the application of drilling wells in Alberta to produce brine is very well understood. And the application to take our concentrate and make a battery called lithium product is also very well understood. So that really hones in on you know, where the company needs to focus this effort and has over the past three years. So we're very close to achieving that goal. And so when you look at that development, you know, in the more near term, uh, the goal of the company is uh, to work on and what we're doing right now and the work that uh, Alberta Innovates is funding is to determine with more certainty the economics of this project using third party contractors that are in Alberta and in Canada. And that work is ongoing. And once that's complete, uh, you know, the goal of the company is to develop the two fronts of this uh, project. project. Um, one is developing the brine re reservoir side of things. So what that eventually will culminate in, hopefully in, in late 2021, is a measured and indicated upgrade. So increasing the confidence of the resource. Um, alongside that, we do hope to be piloting the process as well, so that um, at once those two uh, projects are complete, we'll be able to produce uh, something called a pre-feasibility study and book our reserve. And that's a very important step for a company like us because it allows us to attract uh, much larger funds to go towards commercial construction. So that's the big long-term goal. Yeah, because your plan is to uh, commercialize and become an operating company, is, is it not? That is absolutely correct. And that is why... Uh, being in Alberta has a huge advantage for us because that's what Alberta does is we build projects and companies just like this one. Well, and that comes back to the support that you have from governments at a variety of levels that want to help you to make sure that you navigate your way through any of the regulatory process and, and, uh, and obtain the permits that you need. Uh, Alberta really does have that kind of advantage uh, in, in working with companies to bring them to commercialization. And so it is, it is a good location to be in. Yeah, and, and that support that we've seen uh, from the Alberta government in terms of focusing uh, their energy and their review of developing critical minerals, which is what they're doing currently, is going to have a huge benefit to the company and to the progress of developing this project. Do you have a timeline right at the moment? What's our next milestone that we can come back and check in uh, uh, with you on? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the company is focused on uh, demonstrating economics. And I think that's probably going to be the next major milestone that we will achieve is outlining those. And the time frame is a bit hard to determine because it's a contractor review. Um, but I think that in the next six months, you'll see that. Um, and the next goal after that is piloting and measured indicated upgrades. So those two, uh, like I said, will be hopefully happening in 2021. Well, will you come back and give us an update uh, once we uh, see those this next stage of development? Yeah, absolutely. We would love to come back and, and share with you, hopefully, the results of that first next step that we plan to take. Yeah, well, I know that an awful lot of people have a uh, tremendous amount of interest in what's happening in this whole lithium space because we can all see this growing demand. There's no doubt that it's there, that it's going to continue to grow, and it is going to have a voracious appetite for the minerals and resources that are needed to be able to build out those batteries. Uh, you're in a good position. Yeah, and we've actually seen that um, across the board with lithium development companies recently. There's been a lot of attention um, shown to those companies and uh, things like in, you've seen Tesla invest in uh, development companies who are still pre-production. And that sort of uh, show for, of the OEMs, the automobile manufacturers, uh, investing directly in the supply, I think it demonstrates the worry that they might have on you know, the scarcity of quality products in the lithium space, so battery quality lithium. Um, and, and so those investments are very important. And the market has uh, certainly represented um, with, with most of the lithium stories 
um, seeing them wake up to this story a bit more and, and follow them a bit more closely, and including E3. You know, one final point that uh, I, I want to touch on is how important is it that you are Canadian and North American based, especially when you're looking at supplying the battery market in the United States? Like this does give you a unique uh, position to be in considering regulatory changes and kind of the, 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 the mood and temperature in the United States right now. Yeah, I mean, I think everyone has sort of noticed and uh, a, a sort of path towards deglobalization. Um, you saw that with the U.S. Uh, and Canadian government signing a, an agreement to develop uh, critical minerals, of which lithium is on the list. And that was back in January pre-COVID. But since the pandemic, I think it's highlighted the, um, the risks associated with, you know, being so dependent on global supply of these minerals. And certainly the U.S. has made major moves towards deglobalizing their dependence on critical minerals. And, you know, you might call Canada North American domestic in the sense that, you know, we have a very secure supply agreement across North America. And certainly uh, uh, that is ex accentuated with this critical minerals um, development between the two countries. So I think that there's a very good story um, for deglobalization of critical minerals. And there's not that many opportunities to get lithium in North America, in domestic North America. And E3 definitely represents the potential to be a major supplier of lithium products. So I think that it's a really good news story for um, the US and Canada. Yes, well, we will be watching Chris and I'm really looking forward to having you back in a number of months so that we can get an update on, on where you're at and to continue to look at how that market unfolds. Thanks for joining me today. Absolutely, thank you very much.